today we have a very interesting sermon topic kawuono wan get one watch mar yalo not that interesting per se ok ne mamet ahinya but it is a story that is full of to en sigana mopong gi gen the title of the sermon is this is the story of shame to one watch ni ma e sigand which quote this is the story of disappointment to sigana ma ne go chun i want to invite you to turn with me to the book of genesis chapter 2 adwa gweli monde ngi koda kitabu mar chak we shall read verse 25 wana somo west prairie ogabi genesis chapter 2 chakruok sura reo and in verse number 25 west prairie ogabi this is what the bible says mai ki ma biblo swacho adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame giduto ne gin duge to kata kamano ne ok gineno ka gin gi which quote let's pray walen our father in heaven we thank you for this story of shame May you speak to us through the script Jesus name Amen. Amen Suppose for example you bought a new car Kwa mranyisi kinyeo gari manyen A brand new car Gari manyen This is also something that I also wish for myself Giman benda ko mbona tete Suppose that after buying you have brand new car Kendo samoro ka se is new gari manyen Your first time appearance with this car Kendo en tuolo ni mo kuongo gi gari ni the public It doesn't matter whether that first appearance is in the family gathering or in the church. Oklichka mano bede kindanyo ala kate kanisa. Let us suppose it was in the church in a church setup. To we waka uko mranyisi ka timo rekanisa. You are first with your brand new car to your church. Uo di mo kwango giga chimanyene kanisa. You arrive nicely in the morning. Ichopo gokinyi. Everybody looks at you. Kendoji duto ngi. As you come and park your new car. Kibiro kichungo gachi. Then they are waiting now to congratulate you. Kendogiri ito mondo gipoi. Properly during the lunch break eseche magiyuayo maglunch and the sermon is done koro ka ya loru and the day is now over and odio chieng rumo outside kati uoko we are also following you you because we want you to we want to congratulate you for buying a new car wa bende wa lui mondo wa poi kwa mnyeo ga and you know then the, you begin to start sat on the engine of your kato iya ogari and you realize that the car, the car is faulty kato iya don't need gari niki chango your brand new car is faulty gachi manyen niki chango many of us would be very much ashamed jo mama thought we get it would be a moment of humiliation kamoro no bedi thuolo maru squad you come with this brand new car ni biro ki gari manyen which you have paid its premium price me sa chulo ne gone a new as it is to kako nyen the performance is less desirable teach ne ten ke durat god himself had just released a brand new car o se pena nya sai no golo gache manyen it was called the human being and no luonge ne ba no only just typical Okno loss ya loss. The Bible says God has fashioned people so what you know loss in your own image. Kalu oregi kite. They were not fashioned in his in, in our own image. No ko loss ki kite. We were fashioned in the image and likeness of God. So no loss a child kite. They were the work of his they were not just the work of God's voice. No can man teach the one in the side. They were not even the, a reflection of his character. Bende no knis man kite. It was in his own image and likeness. So nan child to code kite. And this brand new creature. Kaito twech manyene. Was a new creature indeed. It was modeled after God's own heart. No loss it was to say. Launched. So no could you my boy. The new model, the new model was now faulty. Kaito twech manyene no be ki chao. I was God. Dina bed in your side. I would have felt embarrassed. Dina bed you. I would have felt yet. Dina winjo ko ma. I would have felt ashamed. I would have felt Kendo da bedo gingi ko. See you have launched a new model of thing. Ki golo gi manyen. You know then you hear people begin to say. Gaji unjo ka jichako. So what do you know these things do happen today? Ni gigete more. But in your mind you know they are saying. To ine pachi ngani. Well well maybe it was new not new as we thought it was. This amoro gi no knyen ka ka na. I know many of us from such a shame. Ange yo totwa man gi ko. Might even want to take a day or two off the church. Nya lo gomba mondo lewe ka nesa kwa ndalo. Maybe one or two weeks out of the sabbath. Obo ka na jumbe moko ko ko bie sabbath. Matos. Usi epena. The illustration that I've just given. Uh, ler ma chiwone. Doesn't matter really what it is. O kochu no kata ende ni manisi. It can be a brand new marriage that is now undergoing problems. O nyalo bedo keny manyen ma oyudo chandruok. Failing on the first Sabbath after the wedding day. Mangi kore Sabbath mo kuongo to ka rus. First year challenge. Ma higa mo kuongo gi mo bagete. After the wedding weekend. 
Bang o, o, and before the Ken. eyes of the very people who sat on the day of the wedding it may okay. also be the famous business failing before the eyes of those who used to respect that business it could be one of your daughters failing after being taken to university and coming back in, in, in a shame and disappointment it would be your family it can be your own dream it can be your own life that is now failing before your own eyes whatever it is the experience is always humiliating and often embarrassing and disappointing to be in the presence of something something that you expected to blossom in an extraordinary manner and then it behaves in the opposite it can be shameful to a certain lady who went into a marriage hoping that the marriage would blossom or to fade in the next year no in my pastoral work see people expected them to behave in a certain manner yet they behaved otherwise I have young men I have seen young women young children as a church we trusted them with God we expect them to behave in a particular manner but they did it to the opposite I tell you it is much more embarrassing but there is a soul here listening to me while going through such a humiliation friends whatever it is my experience is always traumatizing today we move on with our lives disappointed and ashamed you know there are others who visited hospitals and who are given very sad shocking news of their terminal illnesses the counselors talked to them they have accepted and moved on but the fact is they move on a people who are ashamed and disappointed there are two challenges I want to deal with from the text that we have just read the text begins by telling us that God finished treating Adam and Eve they were both naked and not ashamed the verse is important because of what will follow after that then what begins in chapter 3 is a, visit, a different story story of shame and disappointment listen well my friends wherever you think is the beginning of the story is actually not it your story of shame has not begun from here from See where you think your story of shame has begun in the book of Genesis chapter 3 and I thank God for Genesis chapter 2 we, we need to ask ourselves what really happened because when we read chapter 3 shame is the order of the day allow me to analyze this text as follows number one I need to correct a challenge here and I beg to be corrected by the many theologians outside there because we must admit that we are not the best here but listen to this there is a belief there is an idea that is entertained by Christians that had Adam been with Eve she, she would have not fallen Please allow me to share with you something about biblical thinking. You know, you, whenever you think of an idea in the Bible, ask yourself, does it destroy other ideas that we need or does it support them? You know, some people entertain the idea of Eve being alone as the cause of, of her fall. You may have heard something like that. From the many familiar preachers. But here is why I have a problem with this. You know, the minute you say Eve was weak before sin arrived, you have then accused God of designing a faulty object. So, you, in other words, that 
sin is not actually the cause of the fall. But, but loneliness is the cause. So don't Because by the time sin arrived, the design was already faulty. And when you say this, you have just destroyed the whole Bible. You know, in biblical thinking, never entertain an, an idea that will cannibalize the other beliefs that we believe. If you must sustain this idea, you must now sustain another idea that says God is a faulty uh, God created faulty things that may also make you believe that everything that comes from God is faulty. But that is for another day. When I look at such phrases, I know I honestly treat them as phrases that are not sustainable in the light of what we believe. But I have to preach today. Uh, you know, I'm just submitting to you this day that there should be no struggling to survive. Every belief should survive on its own. And again, I want to say something about the the Bible says after this account now they were ashamed remember they were naked in chapter 2 but who are not ashamed but now they are ashamed in chapter 3 that is the one that matters to me most today. this one ashamed has two very important things one it has a sense of a feeling of feeling of guiltiness because you have you have been exposed Two, it, 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 it has a sense of feeling disappointed and this is the issue we want to talk about there are two types of Christians in the church there are two types of people outside there they struggle with their faith they are ashamed but they are ashamed for two, from two different things. There are Christians who are ashamed because of guilt. And they are Christians because they are disappointed. One are the Christians who are in their journey. They once made very bad mistakes. These are Christians who before God. Now they are struggling to come back to the body of Christ. They walk and they are ashamed. They are seen as ever before. They are seen as ever before. They are seen as announced them before they arrive. They are people in the church. They may be singing. They may be preaching. But deep down their hearts. They are ashamed and disappointed. They are Christians who don't want to come to church. After they fend God. They may come to pubs. They have joined their friends in drinking alcohol. They have begun unrecommended drinks. They may be our sons and daughters. As I preach this message, you may think about your son and daughter. He was once baptized in this faith. But they went away from the Lord. And now they are ashamed and disappointed. They went to town. They engaged in very seductive things. And they ended up pull, those things pulled them out from the church. They now feel ashamed. And doesn't want to come back to the Lord. They can write at the back of their t-shirts. We left the church. But not God. They struggle to survive in such silly phrases. Because they are ashamed and disappointed. They can be some people we know who lost their faith on the way they did things which they are ashamed of friends I know there are Christians who even during the lockdown during Corona they went and never came back that is for another day so the first shame is the shame of the guilt of exposure it has happened to me it made me want to find a place and hide myself away from all men both enemies and friends if it has not happened to you the shame of exposure one of these days 
One of these days, it is going to happen to you. It comes at a time you lack all the strength to face it. It comes at a time you lack all the strength to face the world and tell your story. It comes at a time you have no one to turn to. When the problem now comes, as a church, we have a role to play in disarming that shame that has come upon the world. To play in disarming that shame that has come upon the world. What do I mean? No man is so. Friends, imagine. Who is sick? This patient is sick. They need some help. And when you find them in the when you find them in the hospital, they begin to tell you, "I want to leave the hospital." When you ask them why they want to leave the hospital, they say, "Because I am sick." So you wonder why a sick patient would want to leave a hospital. Listen to me keenly. When you insist to know why they say so. They begin to tell you, "I am way sick for this hospital." They are too good to be sick. Why they want to go after the hospital? 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 Why Happening in what we call church today. It makes people feel so much uncomfortable. Yet this is where they are supposed to come. Our undoing in the church is to make sinners feel so much uncomfortable. Yet this is where they are supposed to come. Feel so much uncomfortable. You know that is what we always do. We tend to make the church become so rigid for sinners. The church become so hot for sinners. So when sinners who are sick want to come to the church, they are made to believe that they are more sick, much sick for the church. Listen to me well. The sinner is supposed to run to the church as a hospital. But unfortunately, the way we have designed the church today, the sinner feels so much ashamed. They need to leave. Very many young people came to the church in Jesus. They came while putting on jeans. And then some smart preachers began to talk about their dressing code. For the whole one hour of their jeans sermons, the young people left the church, never to return again. A charismatic woman. Believer comes to the church. She is not of that faith. She comes in a long trouser. Because a friend has just invited her. She doesn't know the principles of that church. She doesn't know what that church teaches. Then immediately she got into the church. This is what happens. The serious deaconesses summon her for a serious meeting. She left the church. Never to come back again. The irony is how a sick person can leave a hospital to be healed elsewhere. The problem is one. Church today is not a spiritual hospital. Church has become where the sinner is ashamed and the perfect are at home. But this is contrary to Jesus saying I do not come for the righteous but for the unrighteous. This is contrary to Jesus saying to Zacchaeus for the Son of God came to seek that which was lost. You know, how can a spiritual sick person be uncomfortable in a spiritual hospital. You know, today we hear people asking why people are not coming to church. We hear people asking where our youths have gone. We hear people others why they stay at home when it is church time. The issue is not that people are lazy to come to church. The issue is lazy to come to church. People are spiritually sick, but unfortunately, they can't identify with this spiritual church. Because the perfect have taken the church. They feel that the church is for those who are already halfway healed. 
Sinners stay outside. For someone to heal them halfway. Then they can come. And at least have some ability to hold high their heads. The church has always wanted to analyze other people. The church has always wanted to analyze others. But analyzes itself. People, but they are ashamed of how we treat them. We stigmatize sinners. The nurses and the doctors hospital are busy shaming people in the name of preaching the gospel and that they are forming commissions of inquiries to shame and disappoint I'm talking to someone here when patients are looking for churches that can heal them unfortunately our churches are busy looking for better patients God has sent the church to the world God sent the church to the world to go and look for patients but when the church came to the world the church is busy going around looking for who to shame who to disappoint who to summon who to lecture and now Coming ashamed and disappointed. Friends, we need to change our perception of what the church is. The church has instead turned into something else. People are not at home because despise the church. They are not at home because they despise the church. People are not at home because they think the church is because they think the church is no longer necessary. People are at home because they feel they don't know whether there are churches where they can walk in and be welcome. Listen to me, friends. People have heard our songs. They have heard us sing coming home. Never go to Rome. They have heard us sing bringing in the sheaves. My songs. They now want to experience that those songs at the door of the church. People have heard our SOP. People have heard our teaching of baptism. People now want to feel that they have the experience of what we teach. At the door of the church. And I'm here to submit. Churches must now decide whether they are hospitals or hotels. You can't be both. You can't be both in Jesus' name. You know when you book in a hotel, you look good. You look good. If you have been booked in a hospital, you are sick. If you only went to have people who look good as, as, as members of the church, then we are in a hotel, not a church. But if the church is called the hospital of healing, people have to come as they are. Then let me say this. There is no hospital where patients discharge one another. Jesus as the great physician yes, has not discharged me but my fellow patients are should be discharged what a strange phenomenon in the church it is only in the church today where fellow patients do give a physician's analysis it is patients dismissing each other patients call church boards not to focus on redemptive but revengeful discipline they call the board not to focus on, re on redemptive discipline but redemptive we call it revengeful discipline patients clap up by pulling other patients down. That is what is happening in God's hospital today. Patients are climbing up while pulling other patients down in the name of Jesus. And let me tell you, friends, a patient is not been caught. He is sharing the exit of a patient who has been caught. The difference is just one. The one being shown the door 
the symptoms and he was caught. The one showing him the door. They also have symptoms. But theirs has not shown up. We are all patients. We always say we need a savior. We all need a savior. All patients. Friends, let us live in God's church. Of the fact that the patient will be discharged when the master physician comes in his glory. Until then, everyone should be in the hospital. Let us call everyone in the hospital. No matter how sick you are, be in the hospital. When you are in the hospital, you are required to wait. Even if you are feeling good in the night, you wait until the doctor comes in the day. You can speak to the nurses. You can tell them I am fine now. I want to go home now. But the nurses discharge you until the doctor comes. You wait until the doctor comes. The judge's work is to point to the man a man who can improve all our lives and that is Jesus Christ the church today does not present a very encouraging picture the church has become increasingly marginalized it is boys in the society no longer provide solutions it is moral contribution to the national discourse is no longer significant because the leaders in the church those who hold positions in the church who walk in long robe have walked out of the church and went outside and greeted the state they speak one language the church loses its relevance people are ashamed and disappointed friends as I let me tell you this as we conclude no, there are, there are people who are also out there wrestling with God. They are doubting God. They are questioning God. But there is no, there, there is no community that will say we are with you as you question God. We are, we are with you you are the only one who is questioning him we too are in this hospital and we are also questioning him let's go and read your bible well there is nothing wrong about questioning God have you read the book of Job have you read how Moses questioned God we are not the only ones to think struggling God is a sin the bible is full of people who struggle with God as we conclude now when we meet these people let us not lie to them don't tell them they are welcome when they, are, when they come in yet they miss a hand to greet them they miss a face to welcome them they miss a heart to listen to them it is better for God to deal with them at home than come them and come them inside the church it is good for God to deal them from wherever they are than we calling them we to shame them in the church are shamed and disappointed there are people outside there do you know of anyone who was once ashamed in the church do you know anyone who is struggling with God are you ashamed did God disappoint you? Are there things you prayed for and it did not happen? Are there things you should have done and now they blackmail you every, your soul every day? I have come to tell you there is a God who always come in when others walk out. There is a God who comes in in the cool of the garden knowing very well that we have fallen your church members may be surprised but this God is not surprised may you accept him today he is not ashamed of us at all if churches would stop looking for backsliders just because we want to improve our tithes and offerings if only we could stop this issue of looking for backsliders because we only want to look for tithes and offerings and actually look for people because Jesus cares 
the master physician would have discharged us today May the Lord speak this message again in our souls. There are people who are ashamed outside there. Because sometimes they questioned God. They prayed over things. And those things never materialized. They now secluded themselves from the church. They now feel ashamed. They are now worried. God has sent us that we go out and call them. Brother, are you ashamed outside there? Sister, are you disappointed outside there? There is a God who comes in the dark of the night and he clothes us once again. He came that day for Adam and Eve. He can also come for you. Yes, they have ashamed you. Yes, they have disappointed you. They do need a savior. They are not, they are not saints. Yet. They do need a savior. Count it not on them. We do need a savior. Perhaps we disappointed you. Don't count it on us. We do need a savior. The God who comes to those who are disappointed and ashamed. May our churches be a hospital for those who are disappointed and ashamed. And if it is your wish that you want to take Jesus once again, that he may delete all the sequences of the disappointment and shame, this is now the time. May you accept him from wherever you are. We call you to pay attention as we pray. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we thank you. We come from the story of shame and disappointment. Somebody is languishing outside there, disappointed in the heart, ashamed in the, high, in the heart. But we pray, Father, may the Holy Spirit call them. Even as they listen to these messages one by one, may you touch their hearts. Your will be done in our lives. Even as we prepare to come again tomorrow for this same, same program, in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Amen.